Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you today? It's Cheryl from Tinker's Card Art, and I am here with my Craft Round the Clock segment this morning, but you're also finding me on my page, Tinker's Card Art. So welcome, welcome, whether you're my Tinker's Card Art peeps or Craft Round the Clock people. And I am happy to paint here today. I'm hopping into winter and Christmas things. So this is the first, um, I think this is my first segment where I did something Christmassy. I was um, decorating yesterday and I'm going to pull up your comments here too. I was decorating yesterday, got my tree up and this is the very first year I have not worked retail. Hi, Nancy. Hey, Cheryl. Thank you guys for popping in. Say hello. Hi, Tracy. Hello. Thank you for having me here. I'm so appreciative. And um, if you guys uh, check out the Craft Round the Clock site, if you are not a member of that group, please join. The link is in the description and it's live crafting every 45 minutes, Monday through Friday. So Fatima, hello. Hello, Lisa. Thank you guys. Um, so I was saying this is my first season ever not working retail. So I actually had Black Friday off and it was so strange and so wonderful. So I actually could enjoy putting up Christmas decorations. I could enjoy decorating the tree. Usually it's a quick throw the tree up before work or after work and hardly get a chance to look at it. So I loved all my years with my retail store, but I have to say I am enjoying um, having much more time to paint. And uh, Cynthia and Lisa, good morning. Good morning, Pat from Georgia. Yeah, let me know where you guys are watching from. It's always fascinating to me to see who's my neighbor and who's farther away. It is really cool. I was going to do a little bit different project today. I will probably do that maybe next week. I might have shown you the big ball I have that came off one of the trees at Disney Springs. I'm going to paint a winter wonderland scene on it, but the gesso is still drying. So I have these cutout gnomes that I have had and I have been wanting to get off my shelf. So it's just a big piece of pine cut in the shape of a gnome, but I am going to paint him as Santa because I'm all in the Santa mood now. So it's just a piece of pine um, that someone had cut out for me. I stained the back and the sides, so I need to just paint the front. Sometimes I paint the whole piece, gives me sort of a background, and when I put my colors on, there's already something there, but, but this one wasn't stained on the front, so I'm going to just go ahead and paint. Um, hey, Deborah, I loved your... Um, glass tree that was so cool this morning I really love that glass I have not done anything with that glass work but I someday I keep putting it on my list of things to try Charlotte good morning you made it thank you thank you um and then Deb right before me I loved her little plaque she did it looked like a little cutting board and I love the idea of decoupaging down on there first so I'm going to I have some ideas for some Santa paintings with the maybe here comes uh Santa Claus is coming to town or something and decoupaging it on and then painting a little Santa on, on top. So this season we'll be doing lots of Santas and snowmen and little winter wonderland scenes in paint. So whether you're a painter um, or not, I want you to try it if you have an inclination because it's not something you need to have been born with the talent and all that business. I want you to jump in. I do a lot of painting classes for absolute beginners who have never touched a brush. I start you slow. I'll show you step by step. Um, so anyways, I would love it if you uh, picked up a paintbrush. Good morning, Pam. I see some of my um, cardist members. And George, hello and thank you for the birthday wishes. Tomorrow is my birthday, you guys. Um, George is my George, we've been friends longer than probably most anybody. Uh, you and Peggy are my childhood friends from first grade, and we all lived in the same neighborhood growing up. And George is an artist as well. And I love to see you popping in. So thank you. Um, yeah, so my birthday is tomorrow and I am celebrating by doing a three day landscape workshop, which I'll show you the paintings later, but let's just get starting painting on this. Um, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Um, my brother is, uh, my brother's birthday was yesterday. My sister's birthday was the day before and my other brother is beginning of the month. So we have always have had group birthdays, which is really kind of cool. Hi, Sally. Hey, Pam. Good to see you. Good morning. And let's get started. So I'm going to put a little twist on my Santa and make him teal because you know I'm in Florida now and I've been doing all the Florida colors with all the things. As a matter of fact, let me quickly show you this, then we will jump in and paint. Um, I've been I've been wanting to paint like on a ukulele or a violin, and let me see, I can show it to you here better. And I found some at a yard sale finally, and really nice ones, like playable ones. I have a bigger one than this. I just painted this one the other day with a little bit of a tropical scene because now I'm in Florida and, and I have not got tired of painting palm trees yet. 
I don't know how to restring a ukulele, so I painted it like under the strings, which was a challenge, but it was kind of fun. Um, so I love to paint all the things, things I find at yard sales, things I find at antique stores. Um, keep your eyes open and look for unusual things to paint. It's really fun. Okay, because he's tall and he's big, I'm going to start the hat and work down so I don't put my hand in the paint. You can certainly paint him in red or pink or any color. I have like three or four of these boards, so I will paint some others in other colors. And as I do that, I will post pictures. I'm not going to paint the edges because they're stained, so it saves me some time. I'm just going to use this big um, one inch, just a synthetic brush, nothing fancy. And I'm just going to paint the top of the surface of the wood. And Santas are pretty fun. And don't um, shy away because it's, oh, it's faces and I can't paint faces or, or it's a person or whatever. You can paint them very whimsically. You don't have to paint them. I don't know if that's a word, whimsically. But anyway, you don't have to paint them realistic. So I want you to just jump in and have fun. If you have questions as we go, stick them in the comments here. I'm coming through you to StreamYard this morning so that you can actually see what I'm painting. I know it's hard sometimes to be looking... Um, at me upside down. I had a suggestion to try to do something so you could see my work, and this works perfectly. It's uh, StreamYard is the uh, application, and it will sometimes ask you to grant permission. That only allows me so I can see your name when you comment. Now, if I was ordinarily painting this for myself, I'd be tipping him every which way. I still may, but I'm going to try to keep him right in the line of the, the camera so that you can see what I'm doing just a base coat. So I paint in acrylics and it's flat, two-dimensional, right? But I want to make it look 3D and I show you as we go how to do that. And it's just a simple couple of steps. When you have something painted like this and it's flat, how can you make it look three-dimensional? Well, you can add shadows and highlights and that gives the illusion that it is a three-dimensional object. So I simply um, especially on something like this, it'll be very simple, but it will still show um, dimension. So I'm just getting the base coat on there for now, and then we will worry about shading and highlight it. West Virginia, Vicki, thank you for watching. Hi, Gail. Yeah, and we're we're meeting later on today to paint snowmen in my art membership group, so maybe I'll see you there, Gail, and Charlotte, I'm sure I'll see you, and whoever else can pop in. Um, I do have an art membership where I paint live uh, with my members twice a month and then recording twice a month. Elizabeth, good morning. All right, so let me just, I'm gonna just skip uh, real quick and do this part because otherwise, if you were doing this at home, I would paint all of the teal bits, but I'm gonna definitely put my elbow in it if I do that. So I'm gonna just paint this bit and work down. For the fur bits, so he's got a little bit of fur on his hat. I'm gonna paint it. But I think what I want to do is take some modeling paste and a palette knife and really make it textured. It will take a while to dry, so I'm just going to have to put the texture on and I'm just going to paint it later white. But I'll show you. It's kind of a fun technique to use this modeling paste. It's very thick and you can use a knife, palette knife with it and form it. If I do this really tropical, guys, I might even use the uh, modeling paste to make a starfish or something on his hat. We'll see. I'm going to just paint the outfit, the hat, and everything flat. I'm not doing the whole thing dimensional. I'm not going to do it on the beard. I think I might just do it. I'll decide. I may just decide to do it on the beard and uh, mustache, but I do want to do it onto the little hat, um, fur on the hat, fur trim on the hat there. So, and again, thank you guys for popping in. Monday, Monday mornings, I know people are busy a lot of times, but I appreciate it when you do pop in. Um, I'm going to tint my underpainting here a little bit with some paint gray. It just is kind of a blue gray so that when I go a little heavier with the white after, if there's something showing through, it will just have a little shadow. Again, that's how we do uh, to make things appear three-dimensional. Now, doing this with the modeling paste, you may or may not see it, but I do want to seal the wood. I don't want to go right on top with the modeling paste. I want the, the wood covered. So we're going to cover it with this light gray, and then when well, that's dry later, we'll by the modeling paste. Now, the modeling paste is really fun to do all sorts of things. Sometimes I will do a painting of sunflowers and just do them heavy with the modeling paste. 
it's just a little bit of a something, it's just a little bit something different to add texture and dimension to your paintings. And it's really fun. You could get really carried away and do big, you know, elaborate, almost sculpted things, or you could just add little touches to give yourself a little texture. So that's what the modeling paste is all about. And you can use that with your acrylic paint. You can tint it with your acrylic paint, or you can paint over it, whatever you like. And I'd love to know what you guys are working on and how your holiday preparations are coming along. I'll tell you, being in Florida, it doesn't seem like holidays to me because there's no snow and that sort of thing. So it, it took a while to realize that, oh my goodness, it is that time of year. So I did go out, like I said, I got a few gifts. I make most of my gifts. I hope you guys do too, because there's nothing more uh, that nothing that I would rather receive more than something that someone actually made. It just means so much to me. When I was putting my decorations on my tree last night, that's what I thought of. But the different, especially the ones that were my son's when he was a kid, like like the little sand dollar dipped in glitter, or just the little. I think we finally, I think the little styrofoam ball with toothpicks stuck in it finally disintegrated, but. And then um, other decorations that, that have been handmade and given to me, those just mean so much. And think about the easy little things you could make as gifts. Look at all our segments here on Craft Around the Clock. 45-minute segments. You come out with beautiful finished products for the most part. Gifts, uh, product, not products, but you know what I mean, items that would make great gifts. So think about that and uh, let me know what you you might be working on for your crafting or, or art or any sort of sort of um, you know creative endeavor at all. Um, yeah, so I was happy to get my decorations up, and I'm going to take some pictures and I'll post them. But I'm just kind of tweaking everything right now. All right. So when I am painting, um, I want to do his face real quick. I can see right through that skin tone color to where I have just I just took a pencil and sketched on a little design, uh, just a what I wanted to play, where I wanted to place the features and things. So I'm just going to paint that in, but I can see my pencil tracing right through is, which is what I was going to say. You could work out your design on uh, tracing paper first. If you didn't want to go right onto your product, Tanya, you're never late. Remember it's recorded. And it's, so it's never anything. You have to be here right on time. I appreciate you popping in and do remember guys that you can always find the recording afterwards. So never worry about not getting here on time. Um, so I, this will probably take a couple coats on the, on the flesh tone. We'll see. You can mix up any color. You can customize your flesh tones. You can just mix up any color you like. When I do the beard and mustache, I also start with kind of a gray tone. So I am going, hey, hey, Eric, thank you for popping in. I am going to do um, base coat the beard and mustache the same color pretty much that I did on that little fur hat bit. He's going to have a little mouth here, which we'll do in red afterwards. Let me just rinse my brush off and get that beard base coat. Oh, Paula. Yeah, I like, I like, I really do like, um, working with StreamYard. I know sometimes um, the platform doesn't like it when we use something outside of it, but it really is much nicer. So sometimes the reach isn't as good. So that really brings up a point of if you can let others know that I'm here painting or any of us creatives, the best thing you guys can do, and it seems silly, but just a comment or an emoji or something does help word get out there what all of us are here and what we're doing so please let any creatives that you know uh know that we're here and that way if we get the um get the word spread it's kind of nice for all of us on all the pages and please as the creators come on do take a look at their page and give them a follow and and you know, share the share share us out if it's something that you think is worthwhile and you you enjoy because we love bringing all this crafting and artistry to you every day. It's so fun, but uh, it really does help us out. Like I said, to just simply make a comment, like emoji, that sort of thing. It's kind of silly, but it does work. And the the, the beards and the and the hair and the mustache are so fun because it's so free flowing. You can make big, huge, curly strokes. You can make little fine strokes with uh, a liner brush. It's anything goes, there's no right or wrong. 
in painting and art. Don't think it has to come out looking like mine. It really doesn't. It shouldn't. I want it to look like yours. When I paint something twice, it never looks the same either. So I don't expect you to be following along precisely with what I am doing. Let me get a little more paint gray out here. Uh, thank you, Denise. It really does help. Thank you so much. And a lot of base coating. So when, when I'm painting, whether it's a landscape scene or a whimsical, fun little thing like this, it's kind of a lot of the same techniques. I start with a base coat usually, a couple coats if it's needed. Sometimes um, the acrylic paint is not as, it doesn't cover as well as we'd like. So two coats, you know, I know I'm putting it on rather thick here, but I'm trying to spread it out as I go. You don't want to blob it on and have a lot of brush strokes. Sometimes you want texture and I'll do that afterwards, but for the base coat, I want it to dry fairly quick. So I keep a thinner coat and a smoother coat. And then we can have the, have the fun by adding on the um, highlights and the details and all that cool stuff. So anyway, let's keep going with this guy. And so you guys, I don't know if you were tuning in, but um, there was some great, already some great projects. We had two Debs on, and, and Deb right before, before me with Secondhand Treasures did that lovely little, look like a little cutting board plaque. Very sweet and a fabulous gift idea. And then Deb before did that cool tree with the uh, shattered glass and the glass bits, the glass bits, which is, I see a lot of that, and I just love the look of that glass. And then I'm not sure, Deb, if it had the resin, it probably did. I have resin. I have not tried it yet, but I do want to um, play around with that. It's just not enough time, right? Do you guys find that? There's so many crafts and things and projects and whatnot. I'm getting ready for an event and to put my work in a, in a gallery. So I've been doing a lot of painting for that, but I really I think I'll stop today and do some, um, some fun Christmas things for me to just use. Since I did just move, I did purge a lot of my holiday decor. So I am going to maybe paint up some fun Christmas things. So there, and you can see I started a little darker blue. I went a little lighter, not on purpose, but I like the look of it. So I'm going to just get the rest of his beard done here. Oh, I went very blue there. I'm just get a little more beard here, and then I'm going to put the teal coat, and the coat can just end. And I know it's hard to see the bottom, but it's just it just is like a little going to be a little bit of a coat. And I think I'm going to just put some buttons on there for the buttons. I'm not going to. I originally had a belt sketched on. I'm not going to do the belt. I'm going to just paint a few buttons. I have a big button bowl here, but I don't see anything that's going to really match the teal. So I'm going to paint the buttons because we can paint anything. I'm going to rinse that brush off now, and then I'm going to just go ahead now and get the teal of the jacket painted. And remember, you can use any color. I've seen Santas. I've done Santas in like a goldy yellow, which is really nice. Um, Pinks, maroons, blues. Pam, I did not cut the board. I had someone back home that did a lot of cutting out for my, for, um, uh, there's the color, for uh, my classes and things. I did a lot of sign classes and whatnot. And so I had these left over from, for quite a while now. And I moved them with me because they were really a nice board, but I hadn't done anything with them. So I thought, you know what, let's, Paint a no. I was going to paint a gnome, but then I thought I want to do Santa's now. I, I've done a lot of gnomes. Gnomes are adorable. I love gnomes still. I know there's a lot of different camps on love gnomes, don't love gnomes. Um, but I've painted enough of them. I think I wanted to paint some Santa's now. And where I have that event, it's in Vero Beach uh, in a few weeks. I thought, you know, I could use some tropical kind of themed Christmas. So I thought I, in addition to mostly just my fine art paintings, I think I will bring some of these guys along. So either gluing on a starfish or shells or painting them on, I'm not sure yet. Might be nice for the dimension of gluing them on. So we'll see. I haven't decided yet. But again, I always um, take suggestions. It's a simple shape, Pam. 
Um, and I had them also like four or five feet tall. So they made like a nice tall porch leaner, but in a shape rather than just a rectangle. I don't have any of those left, but uh, since I have these, I figure let's get them off my off my shelf in my storeroom there and make something with them, right? This is very much easier for me too on StreamYard here to answer your questions and see them come up. So that's um, great. So throw them in there if you need to. So acrylic paint dries fairly quick. So mostly it's dry now. I'm going to go back up here. Let's work on the hat. So again, so just so I don't put my hand in it, a quick little second coat doesn't need much. It's covered pretty well there. But in order to get my highlights and my shadows, sometimes I like to work wet and wet. I like to force my acrylic paints to look a little like my oils so I have time to blend. Not always possible. Sometimes I have to re-wet areas. Sometimes I just float a color along. Not sure what I'll do here. We'll see how quickly I can work. And that is why I sometimes, when, you, when I'm teaching and whatnot, I am working fairly quickly. I do explain exactly what I'm doing. But I'm doing it so that I can get some blending before the paint dries. So what will I do? I usually use a lighter or a darker shade of whatever color um, I'm working in. So I'm going to just grab, I've got this big flat one-inch brush still. I'm just going to grab a bunch of white on one side of that brush. But I'm not going to go right onto my highlight now because it's a lot of paint i want to just kind of pat it out a little bit and i'm just going to go down the left side say okay so on the left side will be the light and i'll probably give that side a little bit of a lighter uh, highlight on all of the objects i paint on it and because that teal was wet i went right along the side with the white and look at how easily it blended if it was not i could re-wet the teal section here and do the same thing or I could just simply use a wet brush and float the white along. I might want to make it a little wider highlight. Can you see how it's already giving a little dimension, though, to that? It is, right? And let's see. So we've been going about 20 minutes. So I'm going to speed up and stop yakking so much. But you get the idea. And... Let's skip down to the face because I'm going to show you how to use the mo modeling paste on that. So let's concentrate on the face. That's the most important part. And then we're going to quickly, I'll show you how to do texture for beards and hair and all that. So I do I do want to get a little second coat of the flesh tone um, because I do see my lines through and that's okay. But I just want to get a little bit of coverage there. Pam, it's, yeah, that's how I do it. If I was in painting with my oils, I could have time to really put both colors on, take my time, blend them, soften them. But acrylics are a different animal, but I love them. But you can just do wet and wet, or you could do floating, and I do both, and I show as I'm teaching, depending on what method I'm using, I combine, combine them sometimes. I will show you what I'm doing. So this will be a, sort of the same idea. I want to give Santa some rosy cheeks. I want to... Uh, shadow shade under like his hat i think i'll just pull out some burnt sienna which is like a red brown to use for shading i may mix it with some of the flesh color depending on how dark it is but i love giving him a rosy cheeks a little bit of a rosiness on his nose again it's a simple santa face we're going to make cute eyes give him some eyebrows and a little mouth under here which is just a little touch of red nothing too um dramatic so I'm going to go to a smaller brush now. I'm doing the same sort of thing. I'm going to get a little bit of that burnt sienna because where, you know, I think to myself, where would there be a shadow? You could be, you could tell by using a reference photo, but I know that under his hat will be a little bit of a shadow. So I put a line of burnt sienna and then I'm just using, sort of drying off my brush on the paper towel and using kind of that dry brush to blend it. So you've got a little shadow there. It needs to come out a little more. And then around his nose, and I'm going to, I can see a little bit through there. Sometimes just go like this. And around the nose here. Just dry off my brush. I'm working quick because it's still a little tacky, so I have time to kind of soften it a little bit. And I do want to get this where his eyes are. We're going to kind of do that a little shadow like on his eyelid say and it also just helps me place 
This side's much wetter. You can see how it really is blending there. And this is like his little, the sides of his nose. Maybe cross there. It's starting to look from a distance. I can see it in my recording there. Uh, his little nostrils. I don't want to make a big deal of them, but say under here would be kind of like a little nostril. And I'm going to clean my brush and get into some of my light colors. And the a little bit of maybe a tiny bit of red or got also this melon color here. I'm going to mix that together. I like that melon color. And something like this, I could go like right onto his cheeks. Just tacky. It's not super wet. It's just tacky, but it is allowing me to blend. So I'm getting his cheeks a little red, not much. I'd rather start very light and then just get it darker. Let's give him, you know, Santa has, has a little bit of a Red nose, he's been out in the cold all night. And then I can just sort of sprinkle some of this here and there. I need a shadow again back on the edge of this side of his nose. Deepen that. This got a little wiggly waggly over here, but you can kind of see what it looks like if we do that. Yeah, let's just. Reshape. We're giving him a little plastic surgery. There, that's better. You notice when I'm blending with for anything, I wipe my brush off often so that I'm going on with just either fresh color. I'm not dragging some of the paint around that I've already blended with. Now, highlights. So we need a little bit of the white like we were doing because the, the little, um, you know, the outside of his nose there gets a little highlighted there and there. The middle of his nose would have a little bit of a highlight. So I'm dabbing in white paint and just sort of softly blending it, feathering it with my brush. If I have too much paint on there, I wipe it off. I think it needs to be a little blush on the nose there. The cheeks, I do the same thing. I take a little white and kind of on the outside edges, give a little highlight. I wouldn't leave them that strong. But I just kind of do that. Sometimes you want a little bit of a highlight. You could take a little bit, you know, just do a little like almost a little comma stroke with the edge of your brush and step back often and take a look at what you're doing because you really see what you need to address from a distance or if you take a picture of it I can see very well in the uh, video here and I want to just give a little bit better definition to the eyelid kind of there Really helps me looking at the picture because sometimes if I'm just looking at it here, it gets very, um, I get too detailed because I'm so close and nobody else is going to ever look at your painting that close. You want to really stand back. Uh, Pam, the color I'm starting with is called Warm Beige. It's just a saran coat. Good morning, Sue. Um, and Kimberly, good morning. Yes, so I'm going to get some eyes in there so that we can let the white of the eye dry a little bit, then put the pupil and the iris in, and then we can place eyebrows. So white is just going to help me place it. And I'm going to tip it oops, a little bit because I just um, stuck my fingers on that. Let me just straighten that. No one will ever know. Because um, I at the angle I'm at, I just want to make sure I get the eyes placed correctly. And I would always give my students a tracer so you wouldn't have to go freehand like I am. Hey, Stacy. Hello. How are you, my friend? Hi, Chrissy. Um, so, yeah. So when I'm teaching, you don't have to worry about drawing everything exact. I'm happy to make traces in a variety of sizes for anything you might need. So let's just get uh, some eyes here for him so he's not like so he can see and I'm just gonna put them on and do a second coat when that dries. I'm picking up a little of the flesh color, but that's okay. At least I know where my eyes are going now. Let's try to not make them cross-eyed or looking like Marty Feldman. Let me just hold it up for a second so I can see if yeah, one's a little bit too one's a little bit too close to his nose, I think. But just I'll put it down in one second. I just want to make sure I have the right shape here. And yeah, that's right. I 
Okay, I think it's okay. They're a little wonky, a little wonky, but I think they'll be okay and you'll get the technique. Now we'll let that dry and then you can keep looking at your painting and sort of adjusting things if you need to. Now, I'm thinking I want his cheeks a little rosier. So I'm gonna add, I was using mostly the salmon -y color, but I'm gonna add tint to red to it. And the thing is, is you can just adjust acrylics and paint over them. And now you can see that on camera a little better. So yeah, I like that a little better. I still go back in with a little white to kind of highlight. And you can adjust, you can fix things you don't like, you can paint over things you don't like. And sometimes I want just a little rosiness on his face here and there. And I could give a little shadow around here. I'm gonna have some of his hair kind of tucked out and about, but it could be a little shadow around the edge of his hair there. It could be a little more of a shadow. Um, let's give him some eyebrows and I think then I'm going to put some modeling paste on that uh, fur bit and eyebrows. So I'm going to start with the gray like I do because I don't want to, if I start with just white on something that's white, even if I was painting snow, you have not, no way to highlight it. So I painted this color, a grayish blue, not just gray because then that's kind of dull, like a Payne's gray or I add some blue to my black. And that way I can get lighter and lighter and I have some dimension. I have shadow built in. And again, let me just hold it up for a minute so I can see where what this is, because this is kind of a big project. That's good enough. That's good enough there. You can have much bushier eyebrows. I had kind of a small brush there, so I might go a little bigger, make them a little bit. Make them a little bigger, because it's Santa after all. And sometimes he has bigger eyebrows. And then sometimes I have a little bit of hair peeking through here. Hair I'm doing the same as the mustache and the beard. I'd start with the same color so I could have a little bit peeking out and then I'll get it whiter as we go. So let's let that dry a minute. I'm gonna repaint my nostril in down here because it's way over there and it belongs here. And I, again, I step back and I see if I need to highlight or shade anything. I usually just shade one side on the, um, Side of the nose, I, I usually like to have it kind of come up to this eyebrow. So I'm going to just reach, we'll give him a lot of plastic surgery. So we're just gonna give that a little bit there. And let's just make this more of his nose here. And you get the idea, you get the idea there. I don't want that as, as, as solid as of a line, but I just soften it. Cool. So modeling paste in you're getting all kinds of lessons in 45 minutes today modeling paste i use liquitex or whatever brand you like it's really thick it's like it says it's like school paste and i like to apply it with a palette knife but you know what i should do first is the furs on top of the hat right so we need a little shadow across there before i start with the um modeling paste it would be kind of hard to do it afterwards, so let's do that now. So I just need a little bit darker shade of teal um, to shade with, and this might work out of the bottle, or I can mix. I like to show everybody a lot of times just how to mix from the primaries, but color is going to work perfect. So this is going to be a case of me using a wash to shade, shade or highlight. Hey, Daryl, good morning. Look at I'm doing a Florida Santa. Daryl lives over in Stewart, and she's one of my friends for many years, one of my best friends. And we both had Irish shops, hers in Connecticut, mine in Massachusetts, and now we're both in Florida. And we can enjoy our uh, Christmas season now, right, there. So what I do now is I'm just simply taking a clean brush, but I'm wetting it. I'm not having it dripping wet. It's just wet. I'm dipping the corner into the darker shade. Again, I'm going to pat it down a little bit before I go on to my piece. And then I can simply go right across and get a shadow. But I will tweak it a little bit. I will kind of, you know, blend it a bit. But that was pretty well blend for, blended for one stroke. So that's two methods. Wet and wet with the white highlight or with just a wash. And I can go back in and, and tweak those two again. So I apply the modeling paste with a palette knife. 
you can put it on as thick as you want. It's all, it's really fun. It's like paste. And this is not going to dry in time for me to paint it with you guys today, but you get the idea. And look at the fun texture. It's like, it's like frosting a cake. So I'm just going to make it kind of textury. And if I pull it on the knife, look at you get those little peaks, gives you some texture, just like fur. So I am going to go ahead and just put that on. And I will just go close to the to the um, hairline, but I'll probably come in later and give it a little more texture there because I'm going to shade under there. Remember, we've got something underneath something else. We shade it. So you could do all sorts of things with this, though. You could use a sponge or a rough brush and pull it for texture. I like this feel of like I'm frosting a cake. You can swirl it. But if you do, like I said, hold the knife and pull it, you get little peaks. So this is a fun um, technique. You could try this. This could be on canvas. It doesn't have to be on wood. It could be on anything that's a little sturdy. You know, I do it on canvas usually. And you might like to add it to your mixed media pieces or your painted pieces just for texture, just for fun. Great for doing flowers. You could almost use your knife and do individual petals. And let's see, we only have till, I came on at 10.45, so we only have till 11.30, so we have about nine minutes left. And I know it was an ambitious project, and we don't have to always finish exactly, because honestly, underneath, the suit underneath the beard is just exactly like that, just a little shading under the beard, and, and you can do a tiny bit of white down one side. I mostly want you to see the face in this technique of modeling place. So that's really fun. If you had a whole Santa to do or something, wouldn't that be fun? I usually let it dry overnight. I'm going to add some of the, I'll paint it, even though it's white, I'm still going to paint it, but I'm going to put some of the crap, the twinkles. I love this. I, I, I like glitter, not the loose glitter, but this is in a binder. It's in a paint and it's clear and you just put it over anything you want. And yes, and I paint over that pan when it's dry and then I'm actually going to put a little glitter on there as well. So let's go back and give another coat to his eyes, the white of his eyes, which mostly will be covered. Um, I'm going to dry that with my heat gun. It's mostly going to be covered with the iris and the pupil. But let me give it a quick shot. I'll mute it so you don't have to listen, and I will just dry that up so we can put his, uh, the details on his face. All right, so let is put another coat of white. I think I went I went a little too close with the heat gun. I forget it's not the hair dryer; it's very hot, and so now he's got a little bit of acne. But I'm painting right over. You'll never know. There we go. So the white is painted. The rest of his face is done. Let's do a little bit of stroke work on his eyebrows. I just I start at the outside edge. I'm doing hair or beards or fur on animals. I start outside edge and work down so the hair all lays uh, in the right direction. And so I'll start at the end of the eyebrow and just using a flat brush. You could use a round or a liner, but I get a nice um, thin line with my chisel edge of my brush. So I'm working my way almost like I'm laying those hairs down. I can see the gray through a little bit, which is what I want. If I lose it all together, I can always pick up a little and just kind of put a little in there for, for uh, just some lights and darks. And same over here. I'm going to start on the outside edge and I'm just going to build up the eyebrow. And I'll go again another coat. Sometimes the paint dries, it kind of fades a little bit. I want a little coat on the top of really nice bright white. But that, let me put it up closer so you can see. So you can see my little strokes. See some are brighter than others. I like some of those brighter ones, so I will go back as it dries and lay in some that are just nice and bright and almost a little textured, not as textured as the uh, modeling paste, but a little textured. And I want to get some blue twinkly eyes for him. So I'm going to use a nice bright blue and I'm going to just paint those eyes in 
it's mixing in with the white a little bit, but that's okay. I almost like the way it gives it almost like a little highlight. I can dry it again if I need to, too. Trying to make them both centered the same and about the same size. Again, I would ordinarily really be backing up on this a lot as I'm painting. But I'm going to hit that a little bit with the dryer so I can get him. Oh, he's got big blue eyes. Um, let me just do it. I won't get so close this time so I won't give him any more acne. Hang on. I'll just dry this up real quick. But let me mute it for a second. Okay, one more quick coat of blue. Just a little deeper. I could have probably gone using a teal like the outfit, but I think I want it to be more of a real blue eye than teal. Can you see how you could use that modeling paste too to, to make a little starfish that would be dimensional? So I will have to decide whether I want to do that or just glue a starfish on. Okay, I'm going to make a little, um, that's the iris. We've got to make the pupil, and that I am going to use black for. Usually I use Payne's gray as my as my dark uh, because it has a little color in it, but we do want it black. And let's see, I'm going to do, I'm not centering it right in the middle of the eye. I don't want him to look like he's staring. So can you see how I went towards the top? And you'll see it better in a second when I give it a little light on the, Iris, just making these and touching it to the top of the eye there is what I'm doing. And then even though I did a dark blue and it looks from that distance, it's very dark on dark. But I'm going to just give it a little bit of a lighter blue highlight, just like a little, almost like a comma stroke that's going to go around the iris like that. Just so not as, can you see, it just really stands out a little more. I'm going to outline just the top of the eye. I don't like to outline the bottom. You can use a liner, but I'm just going to use my little detail brush. Anytime I do details, I really thin down my paint. So I'm thinning down my black paint, and I'm just going to do a line across the top. And I'm going to do that on the other side. And as I go, I am adding a little more water. I really want a nice thin line, and that's the key to getting a thin line. I know sometimes I can't. I know a steady enough hand. Sometimes it's just the... Uh, the paint. You don't want it to be thick and dragging because then you're bound to push down more and have a thick line, thin, nice light stroke, pull it away. You do need to have some highlights in Santa's eye. So I always tell people if you're doing it at two o'clock, say we'll do it right there. Do it on two o'clock or one o'clock over here. Don't do 11 o'clock and one o'clock because then you really do get Marty Feldman. Simple enough eye, just a simple little Santa eye. You could, like I said, now you could, sometimes I might go and give a little bit more of a highlight to the cheeks. And now I'm going to quickly just show you in, I only have two minutes, but I'm going to um, shade a little bit of Santa's under his hat. So I'm just taking that gray that we used. And so I'm going to quickly tell you while I'm doing this that I have a three-day workshop, landscape workshop starting tomorrow, you guys. And it's going to be recorded, so if you can't make it live, no worries. But it's only $10, and I'm going to quickly show you. No, I only have a few minutes left. I'm going to show you the paintings um, real quick. And there's a link in the um, description there. So we're doing Covered Bridge. We're doing a Snowy Barn. Very easy. I know it looks hard, but I can make it easy for you. And I'm just going to go ahead now. And so I shade just around where the beard and the mustache go. I'm doing it very watery because I'm going to put strokes on top of here for the hair. I'm going to quickly put a little mouth in, even though I would wait just so you know where it goes. I would just put just a little bit of a mouth there. And I would just do just like I did on the eyebrows. I would take a liner brush or, or a um, detail brush, and I start at the outside edge, and I work my way in making the strokes. So I know that was kind of a quick quick uh, go around with Santa but I think you get the get the point 
Gail, thank you. And I usually I finish, but I knew I wouldn't miss, but I really want to start it from my event and kind of show you. And down here on the body, you would really just need to give a little white highlight here and shade under. And I'm simply just glue some buttons on. I'm going to probably paint them first. So I might do something kind of a teal -y, different shade button, but pretty easy. So I apologize that it's not completely done, but you get the idea and you have a Santa face. And so I'm going to ask you now to stick around and watch the next presenter. Refresh your page because sometimes they won't just pop up. You need to refresh your page. I will see you again next week. And I'd love it if anyone wants to join me for my workshop tomorrow. Like I said, it's recorded. You can come and watch it anytime. Thank you guys. And I'll see you next week.